YouTube, Doc, Doc's Motorcycle Service. Rawr, 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 rawr. Welcome back to the garage. YouTube, it's getting cold outside. I don't care where you are, uh, it's getting cold. I was talking with a friend the other day from California, and he said it was 44 and raining there. I think he's up on the northern end. But anyway, I wanted to take a moment and do a little video here about the Deltran Battery Tender Jr. Now, there's an old saying that says, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Right quick, don't forget to check out the Facebook page. That's all I got to say about that. And simply put, what that phrase means is, if you don't use it, it's gonna go bad. And today, we're gonna talk about battery chargers. So, a couple things to think about here. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not judging. There's all kinds of motorcyclists out there. There's people that ride on the weekends. There's people that ride during the week. There's people that ride every day. There's people that just ride rides. Whatever. It's your sled, your money, your job. Do what you want to with it and the hell with what anybody else thinks. But what I want you to think about is what's going on with that motorcycle when you're not riding it. I'm going to show you a little video I shot here of the 2013 Ultra Classic that has an alarm system on it. You'll see the key is blinking on the dashboard. What that means is the alarm system is active. Right now it's monitoring that motorcycle. If I stood that motorcycle up and the key fob was not nearby, the lights would start flashing on it and it would get the kill switch engaged so nobody can steal it. Well guess what? <laughs> Even when I'm not riding that motorcycle, that alarm system is still drawing power. I mean, you got a vehicle outside that's got a alarm system on it and you set it at night before you go to bed. But guess what? You're going to get up the next day and you're going to drive it and it's going to replenish that battery. If you want to understand how all that works, check out the little link right here to the electrical system and charging system motorcycle explained video that I put up a while back. Take a look at that when you can, but keep in mind when a battery, whether it's a little motorcycle battery or a big pickup battery, has a draw on it, if that power is not being replenished to that battery, that battery is eventually going to go dead. What I want to introduce to you is a battery tender. It's a trickle charger. That's what old guys like me used to call it. But basically what this thing does is it plugs into a cable that you put onto your battery and when you're not riding your motorcycle, it puts a trickle charge onto that battery and keeps that battery charged when you're not riding your bike. For example, this 2013 Ultra Classic sat here for about two weeks the other day. We had some extremely cold weather. And here's a tech tip. Any sudden change in temperature is going to kill your battery or discharge your battery. When your motorcycle's been sitting through the winter months or riding through the winter months and your highs have been in the 40s and the 50s and all of a sudden spring hits and you've got an 80 degree day, you're going to have some battery problems. Same thing happens in summertime. You get through them 80s and 90s and 100 and 110 degree days, fall starts to come in, you have a 40 degree night, you're going to have battery problems. But with having a battery tender trickle charger on here, and the one that we're going to look at today is the Battery Tender Junior, which is a 12 volt, 750 milliamp battery charger. You plug this thing into the wall, you plug it into the adapter on your bike, and you walk away. Is it's going to bring the charge of your battery up to 80%. Now it's going to bring it up slowly. It's not going to slam the power in there like a quick charger. You guys probably seen somebody broke down on the side of the road or at the rally. Battery won't start and old boy comes up with this little thing about the size of a half the size of a brick. Plugs it in. It's a quick charger. This is a trickle charger. That one that I just described is made for emergencies. This one uh, the Battery Tender Junior is designed for maintaining, and there's a difference there. So what we're going to look at today is I'm going to show you this thing. I'm going to show you how it operates. I'm going to show you some special features that come with it, because remember, I am broke. I mean, I do not, I'm not one-dimensional. When I spend my money, I want it to do multiple things for me. 
One of the things I like about this battery charger is it comes with two different adapters. It comes with an adapter that you put on your battery and then you feed the hookup down through your frame to make it accessible for the battery tender charger to plug into. And it also comes with an alligator clip style adapter that you can put onto a battery that's not in your motorcycle. So it's really kind of cool. In most instances, to install this thing, you're going to have to take the seat off. If it's a more later model a motorcycle, you're probably going to have to take a cap off somewhere. Keep in mind, I'm just talking about Harley Davidson's because that's all I have. But the 2013 Ultra Classic, you have to take the seat off, you have to move the control module out of the way, and then you have to take a cover off to be able to access the battery. Now I'm going to tell you, here's a tech tip. Follow protocol for connecting this thing to your battery. It's going to come with instructions. I'm not here to do everything for you. I'm here to engage you to get some stuff and learn some knowledge and do some stuff yourself. So follow the instructions that come with it for how to hook it up to your battery, whether it's negative first or positive first, and also follow your service manual for your motorcycle or your owner's manual about what to do to the bike prior to playing with the electrical system. Electricity on a car or a motorcycle they intimidate people because people don't know that much about it. Well, I'm here to help you to understand that, but I'm not going to give you all the knowledge for free. You're going to have to do some of the legwork yourself. So if you've been following along with the series on Hot Dyna, uh, we are now ready to put the battery back into the motorcycle. And now is a perfect time to show you how to hook up the plug-in adapter for this um, for the battery tender on the battery while it's outside of the motorcycle prior to putting it in. Yeah, you can put it in, in in the bike and that's fine and most of you are going to do that. But right now it's just more simpler to put it together outside the battery so you can see what we're doing more better. And keep in mind, I've been using this battery uh, tender charger on this battery and two other batteries all summer. I've got a couple extra batteries around here. I like to keep them charged up in case a friend breaks down somewhere and needs a battery real quick. And there's two other motorcycles here that are apart. I'm not going to take 80 or 90 or or $100 battery and just set it on a shelf and let it die. So what I like to do is take the alligator clip plug for this and then once a week snap it on to those batteries that are not in a motorcycle. Therefore, they are maintained tech tip and they don't go bad. By putting this battery tender on there and letting it monitor and maintain the charge on these batteries, you are going to get more life out of that battery. And the upside is you can also charge any 12 volt um, battery, whether it's a car or truck or pickup with these things to maintain them. For example, uh, in some of the previous videos, you might have seen a white van sitting in our driveway. Uh, that's the van that uh, we inherited uh, from Linda's mother. We don't drive it a lot. About once a week, I'll go out there, open the hood on that thing when it's not raining and all surfaces are dry, use those alligator clips, attach them to her battery, run a drop cord out there, lower the hood down real carefully, and let the uh, battery tender do its job for a couple of days and bring that battery back up to where it needs to be. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Real quick tech tip. Uh, anytime you have a problem with a motorcycle not starting, the first thing your buddy's gonna ask you or the first thing the technician is gonna ask you is how long has the battery been in the motorcycle? Now, most of the time, taking a look at this Napa battery here, we should be able to turn it around and find a date right here. According to this stamp from the manufacturer, this battery was manufactured on April of 2019. Well, that's nice to know, but guess what? If that battery is sitting down in that compartment, you're not gonna be able to see that stamp. So what I like to do with all of my batteries is I take a Sharpie and I write the date on them on the top of them here. As you can see, this one over here was purchased on 6-18-2018, and because I've been maintaining it for two years, it's still a good battery. So here's your battery tender junior. I like it, it's small, it's compact, it plugs into the wall. We're gonna talk about pros and cons. Pro, it has a nice, long cord. to where it 
plugs into your motorcycle app. I'm going to guess that that's probably 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 about 10 feet. My cover has gone off this and you'll see it on the other one over here because I use it so much. But what you have is an end like this on the battery tender. You have an end like this that goes on the adapter either for the alligator clips or the one that's already attached to the bike. And all they simply do is line up and plug in together. It's foolproof. The one coming from the tender has the negative out here. The one on the other end has the positive out here. So when you plug them together, they match up perfectly. There's no way to screw this up unless you take the red and put it on the negative terminal of your battery and the black and put it on the positive side. Guess what happens if you do that? You have a little fuse pack right here. Inside that fuse pack is a seven point amp fuse. So if you do screw up, you've got a fuse that's going to protect you. Pretty smart and that's another pro. I'll show you some pictures of what this thing looks like when it's plugged in. You're going to have an indicator like right here. Again, you're not going to be able to see it. You'll see it better when I plug it in. Plus, you also have instructions on the side of it, both in English and Spanish. Flashing red, not charging battery. That could indicate a problem. Battery could be non-chargeable. You might not have uh, the connections hooked up to one of them the right way. Solid red is next, and that means that it's charging. In other words, when this is red, that means everything's functioning the way that it should be. Milliamps are going into and trickle charging the battery. Next, you have a flashing green. That indicates that the battery is greater than 80% charged. Well, you might think to yourself, how, how could it be 80% charged? Well, you just went on a 100 mile ride, you came back, parked the bike, plugged it in. It's probably at 98, 97%, maybe even 100%, depending on how many accessories you have on your bike. It's solid green, that means it's monitoring the battery. The battery is at an optimal charge. This thing's doing its job. And what it's waiting for the battery to do, since it's a trickle charger, is drop below the point of an optimal charge. Then it's gonna kick back in. It's gonna start flashing, putting the amps back into the battery, keeping you in a situation where you are ready to go. Simple instructions to follow. That's a pro. The only con that I have found with this battery tender junior is that the insides are a little fragile don't drop it don't drag it across the concrete if it hits the ground one time it's pretty much done but again it's an affordable little thing i think i paid 19 dollars for this one and it came with the adapter for the motorcycle and it came with the adapter with the alligator clips on it to charge a battery outside of the motorcycle or to hook it to a car battery or a pickup truck battery. Just remember this is for 12 volt systems only. Tech tip, tech tip, 12 volt battery systems only, okay? Don't put this on a six volt battery. Just don't do it. This is the adapter for the battery. It also comes with a fuse. What you wanna do is use the red one, put it on the positive side of the battery. I put this one on the negative side of the battery. Again, you have a plug up here. Plugs in just like the other adapter cord does. And what you wanna do when you're not charged or not using it is simply push it back together. Pros has a fuse block in it. Kind of a con, but not really a con. It would be nice if it was a little bit longer. You get into some of these old bikes and you wanna to try to hide your cables. You wanna run this thing somewhere where nobody can see it on the big bikes, the Ultra Classics, the Road Kings, bikes with bags and stuff like that. It's a lot easier to hide. Also, here's a tech tip. Tick, tick. Run this out the right side of the motorcycle. With the motorcycle on the jiffy stand, it's gonna be leaning to the left. Your right side is gonna be more exposed, easier, easier able to get to where this cord is gonna be at. Another little tech tip. Wherever you run this thing to, wherever you hide this thing to. I mean, push comes to shove, you can run this thing up through your seat. Oh, I just had a tech tip, woohoo! Got a big bike, like an Ultra Classic that has a two up seat on it. You have that slit in the back there where backrest slides into. If you have one, you could run it up through there and then hang it 
out the side are just located down in that crack somewhere and here's why. Be right back. YouTube, I completely forgot about this. Battery Tender also makes a USB adapter. Plugs into this piece, goes down to your battery. Now you've got a place that you can plug in your cell phone, your GPS, your partner's GPS, or your buddy's GPS, or a cell phone for somebody that you met on the way whose battery died and is in an emergency situation. If they got their charging cord, you can now use this to charge that piece of equipment. Also, some heated gear will plug into the USB or they're made for an adapter to go into the battery tender adapter that goes down to your battery. I'm just gonna tell you, there's a lot of good things about having one of these things. This USB adapter, I think that was like $10. Battery tender, the kit uh, that comes with the piece that goes on your battery, the alligator clip, and the battery tender itself. I think it was like 20 bucks. So I'm telling you, they're good to have around, not only for your motorcycle, but for your automotive, and in case a buddy needs one. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put this thing on. So you got your battery. Typically, you got four places to connect. Two on the front of the battery, and two on the top of the battery. Tech tip, tick tip. I would not attach these to the same bolt that your connectors are gonna to go to for your positive battery cable and your negative battery cable. Because it's just a frustration factor. Having to deal with two uh, cables in a chaotic situation or a frustrating situation, it's just a lot easier to deal with one. On uh, Donna is, I uh, had the positive on the front and the negative on the front and I ran the terminals, you can call this a tech tip if you want to, but I ran the cables the same way that they go down on the side of the bike. So, I mean, really, all you're doing here is taking this screw out, putting it back in, get it finger snug to hold it, coming over here, doing the same thing. This allows your cables to run this way, your fuse box to lay down here on the side, put your cover on, and then run it down in the bike. What I'm gonna do now is tighten these up secure, more than finger tight, take it over to the bike and install it, and let you see how it looks. Real quick tech tip. Remember, these battery terminals, or these lugs, are made out of lead. Lead is a soft metal. So when you go to tighten up these bolts, don't kill them, snug them up, quarter grunt, be done with it because you don't want to strip those holes out from in so there. We've got the battery into the oil tank. It's slotted in where it needs to be at. We actually had to reverse these cables. I forgot which direction this battery has set in there, but the starter side has to go, or the positive side has to go straight down this side over here to get to the starter, and the negative cable bends back over and attaches here. So now, with that in place, all we have to do is figure out what route we want to run this. And probably going to either run it down through here and bring it in under the tank so it's accessible right here and away and away from the exhaust. But I'm thinking what I had done in the past was just run it under the frame and drop it, run it under the frame here and drop it right there. So let me start playing with this thing and we'll see what we're gonna do with it. All right, I think that works. We've got our excess cord stuffed down back here in the back out of the way. We've got it right here. And what we can do is we can bring it down here. And if push comes to shove, we can put a little zip tie right here around this part of the frame to hold that accessible right there and just lay limp when we're not using it. So we're doing this free-handed, but as you can see, we simply got it plugged into our power source. It's blinking red. That indicates that it's functioning, that it's working, but it's not charging because we don't have it plugged in. Now we're gonna take our end, we're gonna undo our cap, and we're gonna plug it in. Our indicator light goes to bright red per the instructions. That means solid red battery is 
charging. If you're looking for another pro, right there. Your instructions are right here. I mean, this is so simple, it's stupid. So, there you go, YouTube. That's how you install a battery charger, a trickle charger, onto your motorcycle. Real quick, don't forget to check out the Facebook page. You're going to find some stuff over there that you're not going to see here because we put up little teaser stuff over there. Very simple. Don't, don't let electricity make you spend some your money to get somebody else to do something for you. Educate yourself, okay? As you can see, this battery charger is foolproof. It's simple to plug in. It's got a nice long cord. If you need to, use a drop cord. It's got a fuse on it in case you do screw up somehow. It comes with a cable not only for your battery, but for your automobile, for a battery outside of the motorcycle. And it's great to have. I mean, again, keep in mind, these newer model motorcycles with the alarm systems, they're going to have a draw on that battery all the time. It makes sense to put this thing on your motorcycle. And it took me, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe 20 or 30 minutes to do this video. Well, guess what? Uh, had I not having to been to move the camera around and stuff like that, I could have had this done in five minutes. It would have taken me longer to open the package and get everything laid out than it would be to put it on to the battery. Again, the battery's out of the motorcycle. I didn't have to take the seat off. You know, you take a, a 2013 or an Ultra Classic with a two-up seat on it, you're going to have to take that safety strap off, or at least that's what Harley-Davidson calls it. And then you're going to have to take the screw out on the back, you're going to have to take your seat off, you're going to have to move your control module out of the way, and you're going to have to take that cover off of the battery. Okay, and then you got to put all that back on when you're done. So it might take you 15 or 20 minutes. But, dude, this is... Trust me, this is a, a great investment for your battery. Batteries are selling between $80 and $120. Why not spend $20 and 20 minutes worth of your time to prolong that life of that battery? Now, I'm going to say something. I ain't going to tell you who told me, okay? But I talked to a guy at a Harley-Davidson dealership one time. I came in and I asked him, I said, dude, I said, how do these batteries last on these 90 motorcycles that you have in the lobby here when you start them up every morning you ride them 15 seconds and you park them in the parking lot they sit out there all day you start them back up you drive them back in 15 seconds later and you shut them off you're not really driving them long enough to get the battery charge replenished by the electrical system and he pulled me over to the side and he showed me a neat little thing that they had set up in the floor where they had battery tenders set up on their batteries. I was like, well, how about that? He's like, yep. He says, uh, we, we drive them out, we drive them back in, we charge them overnight, green light in the morning, and we do it again. And he says, and it prolongs the life of the battery. Um, I took a moment to ask him, I was like, you know, how long you been doing this? He said, I have seen seven years out of a battery when a battery tender was used every day. Okay, keep that in mind. This thing is not charging the battery all the time. It's monitoring the battery. It charges it up to an optimal charge and then it stops and it monitors the battery. And when that charge gets down to an unoptimal charge, it starts building it back up again. So it's prolonging the life of the battery. I don't understand why anybody doesn't have these on their motorcycles. And again, remember what I said earlier about weather. So YouTube, again, I hope this has challenged you to do something on your motorcycle uh, that will save you some money and give you a better riding experience. Because trust me, I have flaws. <laughs> I went out here the other day I hurt my back a couple weeks ago and just did not feel like riding the motorcycle. So I let this one sit here for about two weeks. And guess what? Bam, woke up. Ready to go. Ready to get on that bike and ride. And hit it anyway. Click, 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 click. <laughs> I was like, ah! So I forgot to plug it in. Had I plugged it in, I could have enjoyed a day of riding. Uh, last tech tip I want to tell you is this is not a starter booster, okay? Tech tip. Tick, tick. This is not a starter booster. This is not going to start your motorcycle. And there's a lot of um, people out there that believe that if you start your motorcycle with this hooked up to your battery, 
it'll screw it up. Now, I don't know, I've not tried it, but make sure you unplug it, put your safety cap back on, on the lead to the motorcycle, and then store your battery tender. Remember, don't drop it, keep it safe. But, and again, it's only 20 bucks. So, hope this helps. Thanks for coming by the garage. Uh, appreciate you uh, swinging in and seeing what we got going on. And uh, as always, ride safe, handle your business, save some money. And...